folks at home welcome back to another bama bass hunting video i got my buddy cory here with me we're sitting here admiring what we call bullwinkle one of the wildest deer i've ever seen he shot this deer last year it was absolutely one of the coolest hunts i've ever been on so we put a spotting stalk on it and he actually got to within 25 yards of this buck and he didn't know if the cameraman, which was me, was on the deer or not, so he didn't pull the trigger. We ended up getting it later in the season with the rifle, but Corey has never shot a deer with a crossbow, so we're heading out in the woods. It's been hot this year. We're about to get on him, and Corey, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. If you right. shoot a buck wider than this, I'll pay to have it mounted, because yeah. that is a dang moose. Let's get a spread. All right. Let's see, inside spread, you shoot one bigger than this, and I'll pay to mount it. 21 and maybe some change yep that is a wide wide deer all right dude they're moving so nice buck from last year but let's get in the woods right, and get you a better one so this hunt starts off with a legendary deer that i call rut rut and he gets that name because he basically stays in rut all year long you'll see him fighting other bucks chasing does grunting scraping rubbing on every corner of the property and he basically just stirs the pot all year long and so let's watch him in action So we didn't have any luck in the field that morning, so we decided to move into the woods that afternoon. We headed to a spot that had a double ladder stand with a lot of deer sign around. And it didn't take long before we started seeing a lot of deer activity. The does started coming in. And what do you know? Here comes Rut Rut. Now this is about six to seven hundred yards away from the field we hunted this morning and it looks like he's hot on the trail So he moves on up the hill and about an hour goes on and we finally see a shooter buck that comes out to our right. 
At this point, he's about 100 yards away up on a ridge, and he's following that same game trail that all the deer use that's going to bring him right in front of our stand. And right on cue, here comes Rut Rut. So he came through chasing does and pretty much blew up the area and we never could get the buck to come in any closer. So that basically wrapped that hunt up. We decided that was one of the better bucks we had seen. So we came back that following afternoon. So the next couple hunts were pretty slow, but we finally got some cooler weather and that got the deer on their feet. And a buck slipped in from behind us that we called the gobbler buck. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Both of his brow tines look exactly like turkey feet with a spur. He's a really good looking buck, but he's still a little bit too young. And even though Corey loves turkey hunting, he had to pass on this one. And it's a good thing he did because later that afternoon, here comes the first buck that we saw up on the ridge coming right down the trail we wanted him to. All right, Corey just smoked him. Enraged 2.3s. Dropped him right over there, maybe 30 yards, 40 yards. Let's go look at him. We had to watch this deer again for about 15 minutes. He wouldn't clear one tree for me, and then he wouldn't clear one tree for Corey. Ooh, woo. I see that rack standing up off the ground. Heck yeah, dude. That's a stud. Look at the crawfish pincher there on that yeah, left yeah. side. Mm hmm both sides. Yeah, right. yep. Heck yeah, man. Is that the biggest deer you ever killed? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Someone, he's perfect, isn't he? He's symmetrical. My goodness, that's a nice deer. Dude, what a buck. Dude, I'm pumped for you. Give me some. All right, Corey. I'm proud All of right. you. Good you one. smoked him. Good shot. Appreciate it. I, I could feel you shaking a little bit right there, which oh, if well, I had to I watch had it 15 minutes, I would have been shaking too after <laughs> looking to at him. Him. Corey kept saying, I'm on him. Are you on him? I'm on him. I was like, no, nah, there's a big tree right in between me and him. <laughs> I, I said, Steven, climb behind my yeah, back. He said, can there. you get behind me? I said, no, not with this tripod. I can't. And even though the spread wasn't wider than Bullwinkle, this was still one heck of a buck. And there's only one way to beat a good day of deer hunting, and that's to do a little bass fishing. All right, Corey's got his morning coffee. One rod with a spinnerbait. I'm rattle trapping this morning. Or actually red eye shedding. We're going to get out here and make a few casts before the hunt. Oh, yeah. That's a fatty. We were just saying they all moved out deep. 
Cor got them on the spinnerbait. You can tell they're in that winter pattern. Look at how fat. Got him. White too. You can tell he has been spending a little time down deep. Yeah. Old Pepper Customs spinnerbait and hawk secret. Got him. I'll let her go. Get a little bigger. Oh, I got a good one. Dude, this feels really good. It is four carbon line, but this feels like a big one. Caught him down there deep. I'm assuming that's a drain pipe over there. Let's see how big this is. Hadn't showed his face yet. I'm afraid he's gonna spit this red eye shad as soon as he jumps. Oh, he just got it sideways in his mouth, but they're fat and they fight like crazy. All right, time to fling her up here. Nice. Look at the, I caught a, a bug-eyed belly. Look at the eyeballs on that sucker. Old bug-eyed belly. Look at them eyeballs. Huh. Man, he fought like crazy. You can tell that's good genetics right there. All right, old buddy. He gone. All right, folks, I'm about to do some more fishing, and Liz and I are going to be out doing more hunting this year. But before we end this video, she's got a little bit of news to tell you guys. That 10 point that I shot last year, it's still alive. That is crazy. You guys are not going to want to miss the next video. Hope you all enjoyed this one. See you all next time.